we really want to help you get the most out of your technology. And we've talked about how we're going to evolve the show. And so, Jason, I thought for today's episode that we could talk about what are we doing this year to get more out of life through our tech, right? Because yeah. new year, a lot of people are at, in the professional world are doing end of year reviews and next year's goals. A lot of people do new year's resolutions. I know that I talked mm-hmm. about this on um, leaders lift. Actually, it's going to drop in an episode tomorrow where I take you through my four themes for this year or the four areas of improvement that I want to do. So it's just kind of the time for that. And so I thought, you know what, let's spend a few minutes talking about, what are we going to do differently to get more out of life this year through our tech with our current tech? Mm -hmm. And then what new tech do we want to bring in that we believe is going to help us get more out of life? And then talk about maybe our family, our circles, you know, friends, neighbors, whatever, right? How we plan on helping Mm -hmm. them get more out of tech this out of their tech this year, because we want to help you. Those of you that are watching or listening to the show, we want to help you do the same. And this may prompt you, to do something, or this may prompt a right. question, which you could then go into the feedback and say, Hey, you know, you prompted me for this question, or you can drop it in the comments in the YouTube video, which we try and respond to if we have questions there as well. So, um, right. this is all about us sharing so that you get some ideas that maybe you want to incorporate into your plan for 2024. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Jason, let's start with current tech and new tech we want to get. You go first, then I'll go, and then we'll talk about our family and our circles. Okay. So I kind of included the tech that I want in in each section instead of breaking it out in its own section. So a lot of this stuff in here I I want. So changes to my current tech. So when we talk about our our podcasting, YouTubing, uh, uh, just our recording tech, um, I wanted to tell you that thanks to you, (laughs) <laughs> helping my wife during the uh, the holidays and stuff, I ended up with a little budget. And, you know, it's nothing nothing to write home about, nothing, no big deal. But I do have uh, a recording budget now. Um, I haven't yeah, I, really I dipped into it yet. Hold on, we got to explain this. So so I get right, this text Right, we should explain it. <laughs> and it says, hey, Greg, this is Wendy. Um, I need to get Jason, and I hope it's okay that I mentioned your wife's name. Um, I yeah, know we're yeah. trying to avoid That's names fine. of, like, kids and stuff like that but uh right it's like this is wendy i want to get jason something to help with his recording for the um for the podcast and so then she was talking about is there a camera is there this is there that and so right she's like jason's my normal go-to guy for technology but i can't go to him for this one (laughs) (laughs) so i thought yeah so i gave her a few ideas and stuff like that so it was just kind of funny that hey Wendy listens to the show, probably listens to it almost every week, and she knows that she can reach out to us. So y'all can do the same. Right. Right. So she ended up following your lead. She 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 got some really good stuff. But we talked about this on the episode before last. Now I'm kind of in a holding period, right? We're waiting for the new iPad. We don't know what features they're gonna include in it. We're hoping for some really good features that'll help us improve the show right so and i think i told a story about my switch from last year this switch that that's uh hanging on the wall i got one for christmas then i was stuck in a holding pattern because i knew that this one was coming a few months later so here we are another year and i'm the same way so rather than using that technology for the next couple of months right um because it was some very expensive tech uh, I went ahead and returned it, and now I have that little budget that I'm working with. So um, I say that to the to, to get to my uh, my uh, points that I want to do. So my recording tech, um, I'm going to make some changes. The new iPad Pro, of course, right? It's it's coming. We know it's going to have the M3. Um, we don't know all of the features and stuff yet. We'll as news comes out, we'll we'll provide some updates. But and I'm we'll, all in, no matter what. We'll probably get the hardware first. Right, because odds right. are they're going to announce hardware probably in March. Now that they right, and then WWDC, they've made their other big announcement, which we'll talk about in the post show. But most right. likely, it's not. It's going to be March when we're get get the new iPad Pros. That would be kind of the normal time frame. But we're not going to mm-hmm. know the software enhancements unless there's yeah. another surprise in iOS in iPad OS 17, which seems unlikely 
at yeah. this point, right? So we're probably not going to know what new software features are coming until WWDC in June. So here's my question to you with that. Are you buying in March or are you waiting till WWDC? No, no, I'm definitely buying in March and okay. I'm looking to um I'm looking to uh, go ahead and offload this one sooner rather than later too and I'll I'll talk to you more about that one. Okay. Um that that decision later, but so iPad of course. I'm upgrading from just this, this basic USB-C hub that I have and it's a pretty good it's a Belkin is this Belkin or Anchor? No, no, no. It's a Bio one. That's right. My Belkin one I gave to my brother. So I did have a Belkin one. But these are just hubs, right? I can power it. It has a power pass through and I can charge and all of that. But it's pretty limited. So I'm going to be upgrading that to an actual USB-C docking station, right? These are powered. They have more um, um, higher quality ports on it, even though I don't have a 4K monitor. Future proofing, right? I'm I plan on getting a 4K monitor eventually. The uh the speeds on the USB C and the um um some of them have Thunderbolt Thunderbolt ports on them and stuff like that. So definitely go on a docking station. External cam possibly if I need it, right? There's no camera, and this is another thing that I told her because she bought me a really good camera. There's no camera better than this iPhone, right? There's nothing we can buy, right? Yeah. And unfortunately now. I can't use the back cam and more on that later. We'll talk about that in a post show because uh, Greg shares something that's really cool from, from uh, Belkin. Um, but so I have a suggestion maybe on this a, one. I have a suggestion on this. So I was listening to upgrade and because mm-hmm. um, they're doing some video stuff now too. Right. Okay. And uh, Mike Hurley said he's potentially just going to get a refurb iPhone. And use it as his camera because he's got right. a webcam that he's using right now. I mean, I guess you could go into a really nice Sony or or something like that. But that's why I haven't gotten rid of my 12 Pro yet. And we know that we've got right now the problem with the quality of Zoom and how much it compresses because that's what we're using to record. And so we moved to right. that other software. I think my 12 Pro camera is going to be fine for anything we're going to publish onto. Uh, right. YouTube because we are not going to be Marquez Brownlee and be recording with multiple 8K red cameras, right? I I mean right. I, I I don't want to sell my house to buy a camera, so <laughs> right. so maybe think about that. Maybe it's another iPhone is in your future, and maybe you just wait until fall when the 16 comes and buy the 16 and turn the 14 into your camera. So just want you to think right. about that as we go through the year. Right, right. And and I mentioned this later. We, we we will be doing the iPhone shuffle later this year. If everyone's phone makes it intact, we'll be doing the iPhone shuffle when um when it comes out. But um so external camera possibly. Uh another thing was these pay subscriptions to services that are gonna help us record better, right? So we talked about Riverside, uh we talked about even Canva, like the pro mm-hmm. subscription and stuff for that, uh different things like that. So I'm I'm going from you know just considering those instead of using those pre versions to hey we need them I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and jump on them so that's what the recording stuff my work stuff um not very techy but uh, it is technology you know it may not be the, the the geeky stuff that we like but I need something to help me melt chocolate better and to keep it at a good consistency right the method we're using now it's uh, when the weather's too cold or um, man, my, my, the, the shop is pretty well insulated, right? If it's hot outside, it's holding that heat inside, which is why I have my AC and ventilation and stuff. And when it's cold outside, it's cold inside, even with the fires, two big fires burning with me, it's still cold inside. So something to melt chocolate and keep it at a better consistency. My ventilation, um, I have ventilation now, um, I hadn't checked. I think an animal or something, a bird or something, maybe put a nest on the outside and it's clogged up. So I have to redo my ventilation. And of course, that has to integrate with HomeKit, right? I have to be able to say, computer, turn on ventilation, yep. and yeah. it turns it on for me. By the way, you cannot uh, sell printer. Jason anything Sorry, for his sure house. Computer cancel. Yeah, see? I forgot to mute it. <laughs> you cannot sell Jason anything for his house or his shop that doesn't integrate with home kit at this point it's just not gonna happen right 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 so that's that's coming 
um, a new printer. So this is something I didn't realize with, with printers. And don't get me wrong. If someone's using and buying a home printer, I don't think this is a concern for uh, an average you know, home user, right? A home consumer. Uh, it's just that we use our printer for the company. And the company prints a lot daily. Labels. There's a maximum. Yep. Labels. Everything. Yeah. Everything. Product. Yep. Everything. There is a limit to how much you can print on these things. And it's not, I want to say it's arbitrary because they use some kind of thing that says there's a sensor in there that says like the ink waste or something. I forget what it's called. But once it gets full, it doesn't allow you to print anymore. Regardless of how good a condition a printer is, how good the conditions of the prints still are, once it reaches that maximum, and it's just to force you to buy another printer or to buy a uh, a more an enterprise level printer, right? right? These home printers are just not enough for you. And I know uh, the cost is there, right? You, who wants to you know go and spend six or eight hundred bucks for a printer um, when you know Best Buy or, or Sam's Club has one for two fifty or three fifty like that? And that's what we've been doing. But we hit the maximum on two of those printers. The one we have now, which you probably hear every now and then in the background on the show on, on a few episodes, um, it's 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 done. It, it's reached the end. So we're going back to a um, a more home consumer uh, uh, printer, but this time we have a workaround for that <laughs> that situation that's inevitably going to come up. So um, so work tech, not much tech tech there um but um home tech and i don't know greg you want to do you want to round robin this thing or you want to you want me to just go ahead and shoot through my list yeah go ahead and finish off through your list that's good i'm I'm learning and i got some ideas coming so it might change my list so okay okay so home tech and again there's not much um big Big tech purchases that I'm going to make, right? We already know the big tech purchases that we're going to do. The iPhones, the iPads, the whatever else comes along, the game systems and stuff. But um, for my home, the mesh router, of course, is is, um, is still top of my list. And funny story real quick. Um, I, I'll, I'll make this quick. I'm still monitoring the prices from the moment that I saw when this router was having the issues and remember it turned out to be AT&T's modem that causing the issue and not the actual router. So I said, okay, if it's not broke, I'm not going to replace it, but I've been monitoring the prices of the system that I decided to get. And the best price that I've seen so far wasn't on black Friday. Wasn't that weekend after black Friday. And it wasn't on cyber Monday, which you think that it would be the best price that I've seen that thing so far was on the Tuesday after Cyber Monday. So that'll let you folks know that these prices that they advertise and they try to get you out to the store and they say, okay, well, just wait if you didn't get the product you want. Cyber Monday is coming up. None of that mattered one bit for this particular um, um, mesh router system that I wanted. The best price was that Tuesday after after Black uh, uh, after Cyber Monday. But that's beside the point. Which, I'm going to jump on that as soon as the price Which did you decide you're going to go with? So it was a, um, a TP-Link, uh, okay. Wi-Fi 6. Uh, so it wasn't a version that you sent. That was overkill for what I needed. Really cool <laughs> router, but really overkill and uh, really pricey. So it was the more economical version of that same set that you sent. So cool. same company, uh, really good specs on this thing, really good coverage, a uh, really good amount of devices. Uh, price range is good now. If I really needed to get it, I can get it. But of course, I don't like to pay full price for anything. So. Right. My outdoor lighting. Now, this is not my landscape lighting because the landscape lighting is beautiful, right? The colors. Uh, my, my daughter loves to change the colors for the holidays. We had a red and green in, for our Christmas. We had a sparkly, like, fireworks color for, like, champagne-like color for New Year's. And we just enjoy changing it. That looks really good. When you go to the back uh, of my house in my backyard... It's pretty dark and kind of uh, the uh, the old halogen, not halogen bulbs. What are those bulbs? Um, you know, but the uh, the the regular bulbs, the, the floodlight bulbs that are right. out there, they're they're old. They're they're kind of yellowing and and it just looks really bad. It's dark in some spots. The kid got the kids got a trampoline. Santa bought them a trampoline for Christmas, and it's over in a corner of the shop. 
and it's really dark in there. So when it starts in the evening, it starts getting dark. They don't like to be out there. So I need to upgrade my um, uh, my lighting outside, my spot lighting and uh, some flood lighting outside. And I'm going to go LED like we have in the front, of course, for the power efficiency. But the coloring, the, the brightness and stuff, it just looks better. So I'm going to be upgrading the uh, the lighting. HomeKit Relay for my garage lights. Um, me being as cheap as I had. I No, don't get me wrong. I had a version that worked. Worked really good. I had it for years. Me being cheap and always trying to advance, I saw one that worked directly with HomeKit. The one that I had previously worked with HomeKit through another app. So that was too much trouble for me. I needed it to integrate directly with HomeKit. And I saw this one for really cheap. Well, you get what you pay for as usual. This thing went out in maybe two months. So I have to replace that thing. And I'm thinking about just going back to the original one I had. Um, and a HomeKit relay is basically where you can make a smart device out of something that wouldn't normally be smart. So let's say you had a weird extension cord, which is what I'm using it with. But let's say you had a weird lamp that had a weird uh, uh, power brick or charger or something like that. Uh, a relay kind of sits in between that line. So it requires some wiring. Uh, you have to cut and splice the wiring a little bit. It requires some technical know-how, but you'll basically turn that regular lamp into a smart lamp. Um, better cable management, too, in the attic and power management. So, you know, I hate wires hanging down. That's the reason why uh, Greg bought me. a. Uh, um, I'll make a short about it this week, but uh, the cover a hole in my wall and that hole in the wall was to run wires through because I hate wires hanging down or whatever. Uh, you, you saw the video of the, uh, the Alexa that I have on the, uh, on the ceiling. It runs up into the attic and, and across way before Wi-Fi got as advanced as it is now. We, uh, we had a high speed internet with uh, ethernet. All of those ethernet cables are still up there. Right. And they're not run nicely. Right. They they kind of snake up the wall sort of, sort of neatly. They'll go in and they'll go. And they'll disappear into the attic. Once in the attic, they're just thrown all across. Some of them are over the air ducts. Some of them are ran under the air ducts. All of the security cameras, they all kind of lead to that one point in the kitchen. And it's just a spaghetti mess up there. So I'm going to go up one day this summer or in the spring and kind of clean that up. Um, get some longer cables from some things because some of them are kind of stretched pretty tightly. Um, I'm going going to uh, power some things in some different locations and, and things like that. So better power and cable management. So sort of sort of some behind the scene upgrades for for my home this year. That uh, you know nothing major, but so in this last section. I call Take Myself Before I Wreck Myself. So <laughs> that's kind of a play off of a, off of a song. Showtime. Uh, you probably heard it. <laughs> Take Myself Before I Wreck Myself. So I'm going to purchase, and again, everyone has their, you know, their motivations and their New Year's resolutions and stuff. But I seriously, if anything mot motivates me, it's not to get healthy. Yeah, I, I would love to get healthy. It's not to eat better. It's not to be more active. But as cheap as you know that I am, I've paid for this gym membership for two years and I've been a handful of times. So I feel like I'm just burning money in this gym gym membership. So I have to use it. So to go along with that, I'm going to uh, purchase some full versions of some free apps that I've been using. So one is a kettlebell workout. I love to work with the kettlebells and some uh, weight training apps that I've been seeing I've been seeing ads for. I'm going to look into it to see before I just jump in and buy it. But um, so I'm going to buy some health apps, uh, some full versions instead of using those um, those free versions. Um, Check out a service called Fitbod. Fitbod. Let me, let me write, take a note. Real yeah, quick. they're one of Relay <laughs> FM's sponsors, and you could get a, some discount codes on there too. But they're supposed to be good about taking you through different kinds of workouts to be well-rounded and use what you okay. have available. And they've got video tutorials. And I mean, a lot of, a lot of cases you might be able to actually replace your gym membership with something like that too. Okay. Now, and that's what I was thinking too. I was kind of considering that because I have, and I, I, I glanced through yours and I see like Apple fitness and stuff was on your list. 
So my son, his TV got upgraded and now I have his old TV. I was thinking about just putting it in the garage. So I may be able to maybe pick up a, 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 a refurbished Apple TV or something like that and kind of do some Apple fitness things and, yeah. and some of these other apps in, in the garage. It may be more cost effective than paying monthly for something that I don't use. Yeah. I basically paid a light bill in that place and I never, <laughs> and I never go. So next on my list was becoming uh, reacquainted with health kit. Now I still, you know, I still um, glance and I, I still use some information and stuff in there, right? I still track my weight and things like that, but I really need to get back into um, monitoring those trends and not just monitoring the trends, right? Actually using that information to improve myself. Right. Because before I would see these trends or whatever, and I would compete with those trends to try to stay on the, you know, on the, on the bottom half of that, uh, on, uh, you know, whatever trend it was. But um, lately I'll see, oh, you have a new, you know, walking trend or a new standing trend or, or a new, you know, weight trend or whatever. And I'm just like, eh, dismiss. So becoming reacquainted with, with health app, with, with health kit, uh, up, updated that information too. I'm, I got away from, making sure that all of the information was up to date and where it should be um, using it more on the iPad, <laughs> you know, and I was so excited when they finally put it on the iPad, but I still just use it on the phone. I, I do. I, I, you know, outside of those first couple of months where I was checking it on the iPad, I just fell back into using my iPhone to really uh, monitor and, and, and manage that. So, so it's that. And then, of course, a new blood pressure monitor. Uh, mine never quite start working right again after the iOS 17 update. I don't know what it is. Maybe the the monitor itself requires a, a hardware update. It, it probably should. It probably does. So I think I have to connect it with the USB mod, uh, cable and, and do an update on it. But I'll look into that. But uh, I kind of want a new one anyway. So... That's uh um that's gonna be sort of my my health tech and other than that you know um of course we're gonna keep buying our 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 little Amazon gadgets and and accessories and things like that and you know we're gonna keep testing them throughout the year and and giving some updates and things like that so but uh, as far as anything major that's what's on my radar for at least now I I didn't have the Switch Two on here you know we talked about that if it releases of course that's gonna that's gonna come, I'm but not, I'm not sure that helps us get more out of our life. That oh, it might does. Do it's the it's... <laughs> right. No, it's relaxation. It's 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 helping us tune out for a bit. I bought a NBA 2K24 on the Switch because it was a third of the price over the holidays. Right, they had some good sales. They yeah, did. Yeah, they did. And I've had to limit myself to a certain number of games of basketball a day. So you say you limited yourself to how many games per day? How many are you? Set I'm trying to? to do one. Like last night, I knew I wouldn't be able to fall asleep, and so I played a couple to try and okay defrag and and get back to sleep. But yeah, I'm trying to play one basketball game a day, and that's it. So okay, all right, that's pretty limited. So yeah. we may need to push that to two. <laughs> nah, but on the weekend I'll, I'll give myself a little more I, I got a lot going on and a lot of stuff I want to yeah. get working on so. 